Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to FCM Illuminate. Today we'll be discussing how to build a mobile strategy for your organization and introducing you to Sam, our artificial intelligence chatbot. Just some quick housekeeping rules. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask, there is a Q&A button that you can type your question into. Alternatively, there is a facility where you could raise your hand and you can talk to us if there's a pressing question you'd like to ask. To get the event started, my name is Lloyd Barkers and I'm the General Manager for Corporate Sales for the Flight Center Travel Group in South Africa. Joining us from the USA today is Peter Soltakis, our Technical Sales Director, who will give us a more in-depth presentation on SAM. Before we get the session started, did you know that the average consumer checks their mobile device as many times as 47 times per day? That number increases 86 times per day if the consumer is between the ages of 18 and 24. So if you think around the future of your corporate travel program, in the next four to five years, 50% of your workforce will be made up of millennials. So you can just imagine that they'll be checking their mobile devices continually. And it's no different when it comes to your travel program. Business travelers now look to their mobile devices for navigating their way through an airport to book hotels and rental of cars, arrange transport, and record their travel expenses. Mobile penetration is just as significant in Africa as the rest of the world. According to a 2016 study by Amadeus into the habits of travelers in Africa, the market uses mobile devices to book accommodation, manage hotel itineraries, and amendments, and to source travel information before, after, and during a trip. Furthermore, a third of travelers in Africa booked accommodation using their smartphone in the last 12 months. The move to a mobile world came in tandem with the move to self-service world, in which travelers can book travel and communicate directly with the travel supplier to better manage their trips. Apps have filled the gap for very savvy travelers and book and update travel itineraries on the move. So if we fast forward to what the future looks like, it gives us great pleasure in to, in to introduce you to Sam. Some of you may have heard about Sam, and Peter's really gonna take us through the nuts and bolts of what our Smart Assist mobile application can do. So Peter, over to you. Fantastic, thank you for the introduction, Lloyd. And um, I think just looking at my personal statistics, um, you're talking about how frequently people check their phone, I've been afraid to look at the screen time application on my iPhone because it tells me, uh, you know, how much time, how many times I've picked my phone up uh, and the number of hours per week. And uh, I've tried to make a conscious effort to, to take that number down from four to five hours a week down to hopefully below two. And I'm just getting there. So uh, I guess you can say that I'm also a statistic. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, Peter Soltakis here joining. And um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be walking through our SAM Smart Assistant for mobile uh, application and conducting a live demo. And in order to do that, let me go ahead and uh, steal the share screen from uh, Michelle and Lloyd. So just one second, bear with me. And uh, we'll be underway in just a second. So you should see a screen. I'm about to put my screen onto the screen. And you should see an iPhone. All right, so Sam, Smart Assistant for Mobile. Um, we're gonna do a walkthrough of the, of the product, talk about um, the different features, the functions, talk about the availability, uh, go through um, a hypothetical download scenario in case you've not actually gotten it onto your device just yet. And uh, we'll also talk about um, you know, some of the stuff that's coming in the future as well before we open it up for Q&A um, at the end. So. Fantastic. So what we have here at SAM, Smart Assistant for Mobile, is an artificially intelligent driven chatbot. A chatbot is a piece of technology that combines rules-based automation um, and in the context of corporate travel, provides information predicated off of your itinerary to provide situationally relevant info about your trip as it's happening in real time. So what does that actually mean? Um, as you can see here as I'm walking through the screen, um, what we're looking at is I flicked between my itineraries where we'll spend some more time in a few minutes, but uh, we have this chat notification pane. 
And with this chat notification pane, you can see that I actually have some trips coming up. Uh, I'm actually going on a trip today. Um, and the app, 24 hours out from my flight departure, was telling me it's time to check in online, where I could go in here, click the booking reference, go to the airline site directly without having to have the proprietary app, take me directly to the airline landing page here, and check in quite seamlessly. Or as you can see, providing me with information, relevant updates about what the traffic is to the airport, or what that might look like from integration with uh, Lyft or Uber, if I'm to uh, use my home or my work location and look via a Google Maps API at the real-time traffic uh, on, on the way to the airport for my ride. And uh, what I could do there, of course, is I could even duck into another app through Deep Link integration. The way I like to liken this is um, Sam, it's, uh, it's a facilitator. It's, it's information that's coming to you so that you as a traveler or a travel arranger, as we'll get into, um, you take some of the guesswork out of the travel experience. And by the guesswork, what I'm saying is, um, you know, having to go out and seek information. Um, when I say go out and seek information, what I really mean here is, let me just show you some examples. Um, Stuff that you would traditionally have to run up to the gate counter uh, or to the to the TV at the airport terminal and say, "All right, am I still departing from from where? Um, is my flight on time? Has the gate changed? Have there been any notifications that are situationally again relevant to me as a traveler to help facilitate a seamless travel experience?" And, and what you can see here again, more examples of you know we've brought this into your into your itinerary. Um, or perhaps, you know, we're providing uh, information about uh, travel alerts that are taking place near you. I'll get more into that all in just a minute, just trying to set the stage. But what we have is, um, again, any booking made in the FCM environment, whether it's with an agent, whether it's with the online booking tool, or as we'll get into with Sam, even the ability to, quote, chat with an agent, um, you know, these are all features that are either available in certain markets or forthcoming. We'll touch on all of them from a visual perspective, but, um, you know, the itinerary aggregation is ultimately the fundamental foundational basis of what SAM is designed to do. Um, and as you can see here, um, we can even look at some previous trips if I wish to look at my archive. But again, just focusing on trips that are happening, for example, up ahead, you can see here, uh, I'm flying, I, I happen to live in Philadelphia in the USA, uh, home of Rocky and the Philadelphia cheesesteak. Um, I'm flying to St. Louis, which is home of the, the St. Louis Arch and some of the best barbecue ribs in the country um, later this afternoon, actually. But what I have here, of course, is the booking had auto-populated. I'd actually made this booking in Concur. That's the online booking tool that I use in my market. Uh, it could, of course, be uh, virtually any of the other FCM-supported online booking tools globally. Uh, we do have over 17 single sign-on integrations into various tools, subject to uh, what's best in market for your country. And um, what you see here is here are my flight details. I'd alluded to that seamless check-in, um, which I can do right here for myself personally if I wish to. Uh, and uh, ultimately, there's just a lot of information about my trip or about a hotel if I'd booked one, or if um, you know, I'd booked, booked a rental car as well. Um, I, being a tardy traveler, have not yet uh, even packed for my trip, and if uh, I was to go back into that SAM news pane and show you, um, there are actually notifications and prompts about what the weather might be in St. Louis. As you can see, I'm using Fahrenheit rather than Celsius. I'll show you how you can change those preferences in your personal profile. Uh, and even set reminders on when to leave or get directions to your destination. Again, serving as that facilitator or the seamless handoff of information. Better yet, maybe I don't even know what kind of airplane I'm on. We have an integration right out here um, with Seat Guru where we punch out and you can actually see the seat map for the airplane as well if you want to cross-correlate what your assigned seat was. Uh, is a, along with uh, the seat map here, just to look at some of the schematics. Maybe you're not aware that seat 17B is uh, you know, the, the, the exit row seat or, or whatever it may be. So again, um, trying to combine the best of many elements 
to provide, again, a seamless experience. And before I get off of this um, itinerary piece here, a couple other things I'd like to point out. One, up here up on the top, I can modify segments. I can also click the little share button. And what you see there is I can automatically uh, you know, send a text or an email out with my flight details. So no more having to transpose manually information that uh, you already have digitally when you're trying to, to relay that information. Quick share button, I could hit that over to Lloyd if I want it to right now. Um, and uh, ultimately, uh, you know, a couple other things here. I click the little plus button. Um, I can add a boarding pass if I wish to have that directly within SAM. For example, if I don't have the airline's proprietary app or don't wish to carry around printouts, if they accept a mobile QR, uh, was that QRG, uh, excuse me, no, QRS um, reader, uh, yeah, the, the, the barcode there. Um, or I can also go in, edit, add document, or write new tip. And I'll explain what this is here in just a second. Um, once we exit out, the tips piece is actually uh, part of what we call SAM Communities. And SAM Communities is really our attempt to kind of create um, user-generated content, but within the mobile app. So akin to what you might see with the likes of, uh, you know, a TripAdvisor type website or some sort of guide and information-centric site, um, we're creating an internal, as we, as we called it, SAM community for our, for our users so that for corporate travel, um, oftentimes the, the requests or the information that they're seeking is not so much, um, you know, where's a great place to get uh, burgers and fries, uh, or maybe where's a great place to, to take the kids that has a pool, but maybe it's more along the lines of, you know, where's a good place for coffee at the airport, or, um, you know, what's a good skip the line tip in order to uh, reduce the amount of time I have to spend in the queue at the airport? Or, uh, you know, there's a, there's a good bank of power electric chargers at such and such terminal by gate so and so, and uh, it's a great place for corporate business travelers. So that's the premise with SAM Community. Uh, right now, as you saw there, it is currently a function of airports. Um, we're also going to be expanding that out to our city guides as well as to hotel and car suggestions uh, in the coming year. Now, I know I'd mentioned, um, I said city guide, so let me show you as well some of the information that is stored here in SAM. And what we have here is um, simply, as the name implies, a city guide. And the idea with the city guide is business travel and leisure travel um, have really had a lot of bleed over in recent times where business travel might say, oh, I'm in such and such destination from Monday to Friday. And, um, you know, I don't have to be back here until Monday. You know, maybe we're doing a two week or three week, you know, trip or, or maybe you're just passing through. But to that extent, leisure is where um, if I were to say extend on my own dime and pay for hotel out of pocket, say on that Friday, Saturday night, um, because technically, you know, the company might fly me back to my home destination, my home base. Um, leisure is when you start building in some fun elements, those leisure elements into your business trip. So if I'm in Los Angeles, for example, for a week, uh, and I want to learn about the city, of course, the city guide provides me with lots of information, tells me about, you know, what, what's to do in Hollywood, um, you know, the Walk of Fame, uh, what's a little info about the city itself, how many people live there. But leisure is, you know, bringing those elements into play. And when it gets down to it, looking and saying, you know, well, here are some of the top attractions in L.A. You know, Griffiths Observatory. If you've seen the movie La La Land, they go and dance at the top of Griffiths. Or you want to go to Universal Hollywood and have a good time and experience, you know, what it's like to be a film star. Um, that's when we get into leisure. Moving through, though, with the city guides, if I wished, I could get some information, some practical tips on the public transportation in the city. Uh, what's the current time in the city? It's uh, 4.19 in the morning over there, uh, as well as some practical stuff. Whether this is a domestic trip or an international trip, um, you know, especially when you get out of country. And that's when we have things like tipping culture might change, language changes, uh, electric plugs might change. 
emergency contacts numbers might change. It could be 112, it could be 911, it could be a, a variety of other uh, emergency phone numbers. Of course, we want to provide that information to our travelers to also help them with, uh, you know, our corporate clients with their corporate social responsibility to ensure that there is carryover uh, of information so travelers are informed in all of their destinations, as well as just some basic information here on things like cost of living. How much does a Big Mac at McDonald's cost versus a cup of coffee or a beer? If I was, say, in Geneva, Switzerland, all of these figures might be doubled. Where, whereas if I were, say, you know, somewhere else, maybe the price may fluctuate. So again, bringing in some of those leisure elements into the trip experience. So that's a fair bit on the itinerary-based information. Um, I'm going to walk you through a few more things on my feed. We'll go into options. Then I'll storyboard a demo for you. And then we'll show everyone um, a couple of the advanced features and how to download. So a couple things here. Um, we can see that uh, I was in Dallas, Texas a couple of weeks ago. And um, what I actually got here was some information about things that could potentially impact my onwards journey. FCM uh, globally partners with a company called World Aware, formerly known as iJet, which is one of the top three global travel risk management providers. And uh, this is actually a new feature and function um, that we've been piloting up until about a month ago. And uh, you know, very, very uh, forthcoming, have the ability to actually enable um, for markets where we have um, you know, the, this available, which is predominantly everywhere, since it is a global agreement we have with World Aware. And um, so simply, if a user has SAM, Smart Assistant for Mobile, he or she is also capable of getting contextually relevant security and safety updates, whether it's defined by critical alerts only or critical and warning alerts that can be determined at the company level. So if you have you know, that, that relationship with your FCM account manager and uh, you're a SAM user uh, as a company, um, of course we can toggle those, those alerts to turn on. Um, and what you see here is um, there was a fire at air traffic control when I just so happened to be in Dallas. And um, this is more of a, a warning alert because this has the potential to impact my onwards travel Maybe I'm sitting there questioning, why is my flight delayed? Or, um, you know, do you think that this warrants reaching out to an FCM agent to, to facilitate either a hotel if I have to get stuck overnight or, um, you know, reaccommodation on another flight? And um, ultimately, this was not a really big deal when, when you think of it, um, because things like this happen somewhat frequently, little travel hiccups. Um, but I just want to paint the picture that should this have been, for example, uh, a national, uh, you know, a national or geographical calamity, or a terrorist alert, then this might have much more severe implications for my onwards travel. And then, of course, those alerts would come in to me here on the app. We're going to scroll through my news pane. I mentioned um, how could we turn this into action. So you have all of this info as an end user, which is great um, information. Ultimately, there's no such thing in my opinion as too much data, so long as you can make sense of it. And um, what we do with this is this is where we can, through one touch clicks, allow an end user to, to kind of punch out into a call to action. And that call to action might be call a consultant. Let's pretend that my flight was delayed, canceled, or one of those uh, you know, severe alerts had materialized, I can click here, call an agent, and what's happening is um, one touch out, this is actually an FCM staff travel number that I happen to use. We are big proponents of our own services, but um, with SAM, this would be programmed back to your, your, uh, your home FCM operational team, whether that's, you know, based in, in South Africa or wherever you as a profiled traveler might be, it would automatically connect you with that local market team. And um, really the, the, the big objective there is simplicity and ease of use. Furthermore, what we can see here is with SAM, I also have the ability, um, you know, should we enable this, um, assuming that the, the features support it in all markets, we'll talk about 
um, you know, what is available where from a global scalability standpoint, um, because SAM is, uh, you know, getting deployed more and more globally. Um, what, what we have is the ability to type with an SCM agent in a chat-like experience. And, and what we have here, you can see some of my examples, is where um, by communicating through this, really what it is, is um, this is working back to a, a person who's in our desks, in our offices, real SCM agent, um, you know, not outsourced, not, not even the automated chatbot component. Um, the chatbot is designed to provide information, but sometimes when in a pinch, you still need that human touch to help facilitate uh, the travel. And as you can see here with my experience with my colleague, Manny, um, I personally had a flight that was canceled and um, I was stuck overnight in the city. And what you see here is with my correspondence with Manny, while well, you know, I'm, I'm queued up 40, 50 people deep at the ticket counter while they're trying to reaccommodate all the disgruntled people who are stuck. Um, what I have here is, you know, I said, all right, well, I'm going to keep an ear out for the overhead PA system. But uh, I work for a travel company and FCM books my travel. I work for FCM. I'm going to use our service. And um, what, what we have here was uh, with Manny, I was actually able to get on a different flight at 7 in the morning as opposed to the two in the afternoon that my carrier was proposing. He got me reaccommodated and uh, I took the free hotel voucher and a drink coupon from the, from the airline. So by the time that I'd reached the front of the desk, all I had to do was pick up my freebies and get out of town and go grab dinner with a friend who lived there. So really, you know, by combining through rules-based automation, um, you know, this, this agent-like experience, the information push, which is truly what you know, Sam is designed to do, is a companion app uh, with with some of this additional technology. I was able to have a smooth and seamless experience for my onwards journey. Now, what does Sam look like from an onwards journey standpoint? Let's pretend we're doing this in real time rather than just looking at what me, Peter, what I've done. So I've changed names as part of this demo. And what we see here, we're gonna walk through and I'll explain what's happening as we go through this sequencing. Um, so apparently I'm David now, and apparently David is flying from London to Paris in this staged environment. So he just made a booking, and what we have here is the booking flows into SAM, details are right there. Um, as we can see, you know, there, there's his record locator number, he could have had the option to check in. Um, I'll explain the delay in a minute. We can see that maybe he was delayed. That sounds good. Thank you, Sam. Thank you for the information. Lovely. We're going to Paris. You know, here's my city guide on Paris. Again, all of that great rich content that I'd shown you earlier. So thank you, Sam. Um, now we're kind of suspending our disbelief. Um, we're getting ready to leave, you know, the next day. So here's the, the weather alert. This is what I need to pack for Sam, uh, excuse me, pack uh, for Paris, courtesy of Sam. My check-in online, now I'm getting up to the point where maybe I've not checked in online. Uh, check-in is two hours uh, prior to departure. So of course, um, you know, whatever time that was that it said departure was, it's prompting me to say, just FYI for your information, be sure that you have <laughs> checked in for your flight. Um, of course, it's an international trip, and maybe you have to do that three hours in advance or whatever the rules of the carrier might be. That information, of course, carries over. This is where I'd explained with the details of um, the, the flight delay. So you see Sam has pushed me a notification about the 20-minute delay. That's not going to kill me, um, so that's okay. The gate is out of A17. That is lovely. Thank you for the information. Of course, if that was, you know, beyond 20 minutes, let's pretend that was like five hours. Then, of course, as I'd shown you a minute ago, this might trigger me into a workflow where I reach out to the team and say, hey, guys, I'm going to miss my meeting in such and such destination. This is quite important that I make it. Can you please help with reaccommodation? Again, we're trying to bring and paint a bigger data picture for the end user, the traveler, as well as the travel arranger, which I'll explain in a minute. Um, to again help facilitate that onwards journey. As we see here, there's a general strike. Um, this is not a 
maybe this is maybe an inconvenience, but it does not pr perhaps propose uh, or pose, excuse me, a, a risk to life or health. But let's say this was much more severe. Um, so what we have here, if you want to send me a postcard, that's where uh, you know I happen to be at this very moment. But with that share my location feature, let's say that you want the traveler to check in. Um, this actually ties into our our secure tool. So FCM Secure is a global travel risk management tool that we provide to our clients to help them support their duty of care obligations, bringing in that world aware data, as well as the reservation data that's generated in our GDS, our global distribution system, AKA your bookings. And if I wish to, again, share my location, um, this would drop a pin onto a map so that I, as perhaps a travel manager or somebody from a risk perspective, or maybe from FCM, like an account manager, can have that level of visibility. Moving through, um, we're gonna continue this kind of hypothetical uh, trip here. Great, um, now Sam is telling me when I need to leave for the airport. Okay, lovely. Uh, if I want, again, I can you know, take that map into Google Maps because it's an API if I click out of it or um, I can just simply look at this and say, it's taking a little bit longer than usual. I should try to get out the door sooner than I had originally intended. And um, now what we have here is we've changed people's names. What just happened? <laughs> this is where Sam for Travel Arrangers comes into play. And I'll explain that. So the, Sam, what I've shown you so far is really designed as intended for the traveler, but, let me exit this um, demo mode. Now I'm back in my personal mode. Sam for travel arrangers and managers. So if I go in here to any one of these people, what you see is this is beyond just myself. And um, this is a feature that uh, you know we we are deploying globally. Um, you know, actually this Q1, this feature just became live for live active SAM clients and users um, just a few weeks ago. And um, really, the idea here is, well, why should the travelers just have all the fun? Why can't I, as perhaps a booker or a manager who looks after maybe some of our core executives or road warriors or people who are simply just heavy travel users, why can't I have their information on my mobile device as well? And the idea here is I can click into any one of these people, reference their itinerary, and uh, simply I can either click into it for informational purposes, or in this news pane, as we just saw, or in the instance of my colleague, um, Isaac Stefan Cohen, the other day, um, I received an alert because his flight was delayed more than an hour and nine minutes. And as we know, that has downstream implications for, um, you know, for travel. Like if I'm booking for the CEO and his or her flight from, you know, Johannesburg to, to Cairo, let's say that we're going all the way from, from south to north, uh, gets, gets delayed or canceled by more than an hour. You know, there, there's a meeting that's going to get screwed up or there's, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the ground transportation provider who I've already pre-scheduled for, for pickup at the airport, that gets screwed up. And then I have to coordinate with all these other elements that are on the calendar or on the itinerary um, before he or she even touches down on the ground. Because, you know, the last thing you want for, for those, you know, kind of VIP travelers uh, or just simply heavy end users is, um, you know, uh, stress, travel stress. And the stress of landing and then having your phone blow up with alerts and notifications of this is canceled and your onwards journey is, is messed up and this is gonna, uh, you know, fluster your meeting. If I have the ability to preemptively um, strike, AKA, you know, work with FCM, get some reaccommodations taken care of in advance of that person even touching ground and turning their phone back on, that gives me more value. And that allows the, the automated processes of the mobile app to help work for me and work in my favor. So really, again, what I'm getting here is the more information I have, the more I can do uh, you know, subject to which personification of the end user group, whether I'm a traveler, a booker, or an arranger, um, you know, 
we have technology that's really designed and carried over through SAM to help make each of those people's lives a little bit easier by us being your managed travel program provider. So that is SAM for travel arrangers and managers in a nutshell. If I wish to, you know, click in and just see the live status, this happened the other day, so he made it safely and soundly. But again, this information is coming in in real time from the mobile app. And um, a couple other things. So I've neglected to show this options panel just because uh, I figured, you know, the other two pieces were a little bit more relevant. But let's get into some of the more granular details now. We've shown how to reach out to the travel consultant team from the call and the chat button. The profile that's populated in SAM stems from your FCM hub. So it's a bit more of a limited profile because it's your mobile profile. Um, we figured, you know, rather than have it be the end all be all, um, you know, it does tap over into some of the part of the ecosystems where it draws on the profile, your phone number that might be your, um, your default phone number. Of course, you can set a home address or a work address because we had um, indicate it with the, the maps API how to to bring in some of that data and for example if you live in a city that has maybe one or multiple airports you can also set a home airport and um, you can also forward emails and when I say forward emails here I would like to show you all that at trips at meetsam.io what happens here is if you book a trip outside of our environment we're not going to penalize you for it. Um, you know, obviously, as much as we would love for you to, to bring as much of your bookings into our environment as possible for duty of care, for visibility on spend, and all these other great auto sync uh, elements that SAM uh, provides you, as well as we provide you as a managed travel company, is you can forward your personal trips to, to SAM. So case in point, I'm actually going to show you here. Um, I have a lot of business trips ahead. Give me one second. <laughs> um, I'm flying to Kilimanjaro to Tanzania uh, this summer, and uh, I did not book that with FCM because that's not a business trip. Uh, I'm going to be gone for two weeks, and I booked it on my personal credit card points. And um, simply all I did in order to get this information about my flight um, through Ethiopia to Tanzania and then uh, on my way home is I forward it by itinerary to trips at meetsam.io. So what I'm looking at there is it's an email parser. So what you can do is, um, you know, so long as you have a recognized email, whether it's your personal Gmail or your forwarding from your corporate email account, um, again, aggregation of information is absolutely paramount to our SAM experience. And I can use SAM just as much as a, as a leisure traveler going to climb Mount Kilimanjaro as I could with, um, you know, my business trips. So if my flights are delayed, canceled, whatever, I'll get those notifications. It's so pretty exciting. I'd mentioned the notifications. SAM provides you a lot of notifications, so you can toggle which ones are relevant to you. Maybe you prefer a different date format, um, you know, 12 hour time versus 24 hour military time. Uh, you want kilometers versus miles. Uh, Celsius versus Fahrenheit, those can all be programmed. And um, my favorite piece here actually is what we do with the stats. And with the stats here, what we have is simply data, 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 data. We love data at FCM. Um, just ask your FCM account manager and they'll get you reports out the wazoo. People love reports here. We love our data. But making that data more relevant to a traveler. How can you get them excited about business travel? You know, like traveling for business, it's not always glamorous. It's not always, um, you know, how, how the movies make it out to be. Yes, everyone's in business class, eating with cutlery, drinking champagne. That's for, you know, most travelers, not always the norm. <laughs> I know it's not for me, at least. Um, and uh, how, how do you make that relevant to them? How do you make them feel like they're part of something greater than just themselves? You know, we're all in it to win it. We're all in it together. And what you see here is with the data, we can actually provide information of, you know, since you've been uh, a SAM traveler, or if you want to change the view down to a year type thing, 
Um, what does your travel data work out to against not just your company, FCM, uh, in this case, since this is against my staff travel peers, or what does this work out to against FCM's bench data set? And what you can see here is, you know, I kind of fall maybe more towards the middle of things, even though I like to think that maybe I'm a big wig traveler over here. And tying that data back to a data story. So this is where the fun stuff comes into play. I've covered a marathon, Route 66, the Trans-Siberian Railway from you know Moscow to Vladivostok, um, Great Wall of China's length, all my blood vessels. Apparently, you have 60,000 miles of blood vessels in your body. Who knew? Ask a doctor. Um, the diameter of Jupiter, and my next goal is the moon. <laughs> so um, hopefully, maybe I don't have to reach the moon one day. I suppose one day I will. But um, it's a lot of business travel. But by making the data story more interesting, this is what gets your travelers talking about. Oh yeah, I booked with FCM. I've you know watched 205 Harry Potter film equivalents, uh, whereas you know that's what my business travel translates to. And that just tries to contextualize the numbers because we have a lot of numbers that we collect on our clients and individual travelers. But why not just make this something more digestible? And with this data under this stat section, um, we try to make that data more relatable so people have fun endpoints that they can communicate um, that tries to help drive them, you know, being that bright, shiny light that they naturally gravitate towards, that's FCM, that helps travel managers and corporations with things like compliance, better booking behavior, and uh, ultimately, hopefully, some cost savings as a consequence. So um, very light touches with the stats but ultimately with those light touches, trying to make information interesting to the end user. My last piece here is for those end users who already have SAM, I'd like to point out, we'll, we'll walk through a, a sign-in process. So SAM is available on the Apple App Store and on Google Play. So if I type FCM SAM here on the store, Obviously, I already have it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been talking to you. Um, but if you don't already have it, I'd highly encourage you to get in there, download the app, and um, you know, just get signed in, check it out, see what we got. And um, really, what I have here is, once I'm downloaded, I'm in the app. Um, you know, if you're following along at home right now, go ahead and hit that download button. Um, I simply sign in by saying, yes, I recognize that I'm traveling with one of these flight center brands. I accept the use of personal data policy here. Sign my life away. Just kidding. And um, type in your credentials, the one that you standardly use to access our hub or access the online portal. And you click log in. Oops, I mistyped. Hold on. E-S-A-L-T-A-K-P at U-S dot S-C-N Let's try that again. Oh, I keep typing. I keep having a typo. Just kidding. Let me switch this out here. And let's pull this up here. All right. Try that again. Do full screen mode. And while I'm doing that, we'll suspend our disbelief. And uh, sometimes, despite having 45 some odd minutes of fluid, lovely conversation with everybody, technology always sometimes never ceases to amaze me. And um, with that said, um, I will fight with my own phone on the back end. <laughs> And um, while we're doing that, uh, I guess I will kick it over to, uh, to Lloyd and Michelle for just a quick minute here and uh, answer some questions while I get my screen share device back up and running the way it was working for the last 40 minutes. So, aren't, you, aren't you loving technology? <laughs> love it. Love technology. Are there, there any questions we are. from the audience? And actually, I think this, there we go. Now I got it. 
And while the audience is either a little gun shy or still on mute, I think a lot of them are still potentially on mute. Feel free to send in your questions via the chat on Zoom or unmute yourself and uh, feel free to talk to us. We don't bite, I promise. Um, I do also want to point out to this diagram while I'm doing that. Let me blow this up. So right now, um, you know, out in South Africa, a number of countries in Africa, Middle East, uh, as well as in the Americas and uh, Europe, Sam is currently live. We do have Sam coming in a few more waves here for some countries where it is not yet out, um, AKA um, the idea that the trick with deploying a piece of technology like this for travel is that um, because there are different back office systems, GDS systems, online booking tools, and procedures in each country, we've essentially had to map, map that user experience, that user story, that user journey. And as a consequence, um, we've had a phased rollout approach since the past year. And i um, happy, of course, to share this offline afterwards, but just wanted to let everyone know, um, you know, where Sam currently is and is coming. And yeah. um, as we can see here, yeah. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you. We have a question that's come in from the audience. Um, can you give us some insights as to how we arrange the, the setup for the arranger view in the SAM app? Great question. So in order for us to turn the SAM for Travel Arrangers feature on, um, if you have a hierarchy currently built into Hub, uh, I'll actually pull this up just to show you right now. Um, so we need basically an approval hierarchy as it is. And um, I'll just sign into my personal uh, hub just to show you what that looks like. Um, this, can, this is typically done either on the back end or if you have self-assigning arranger capabilities. I'll show you what that looks like. We can enable this yourself. Otherwise, I would recommend talking with your FCM account manager because that just requires us to click a few buttons on the back end. But as you can see here, I can masquerade. So if you, for example, have a view that looks something like this on Hub, then you in theory should be able to have this easily accessible. If you have this view, but it's not yet turned on, we might just have to click a couple things. So escalate that to your FCM account manager. Perfect, thanks Peter. Great question. And do okay. we have some other questions? Uh, not as yet. Any other questions from our attendees today? So I have just been notified as well, Peter, care of our technology department. Um, SAM for arrangers for SAM has been deployed in the South African market. So to your point and what you've just shown, it is available for all users in South Africa now. So we're well on that roadmap that you pointed out. Beautiful. Thank you, technology department. <laughs> Yep, so there's just a bit more on the SAM for Travel Arrangers view. And um, I guess while we're letting some people who were gun shy trickle in for the comments, um, I did get my phone back up and running. So I just wanted to show everybody what it looks like um, when you're signing in. We have this thing called the Magic Link. And Magic Link um, is one of the two ways you can sign in to SAM. One is you can use simply your, your normal credential, AKA your username and password. Uh, I already used this link on another phone. Um, so, so what you do is you click to log in to Sam right there. And what it'll do is authenticate you. So I'll send a new link just for the live purposes of this demo. Once the link comes in, I'll refresh my page. There we go, I clicked it a few times. <laughs> Um, and then what it'll do is it'll create a token and with that token, I don't even have to remember my password. So the beauty of not having to remember my password is if you're like me, odds are you've got a hundred passwords for your, for everything, Google, your bank, um, you know, getting into your computer, uh, your, your different devices. 
it's, it's very challenging to keep track of all those passwords. So with that magic link, AKA, you get this cute little guy here smiling. I've already used the link. It basically provides a secure session so that when I sign in to Sam, I get that into my inbox and then I use that token to sign in just like I did there a second ago. Okay. Um, Peter, yeah, I'm, I'm aware of everybody's time. So yeah, I think that brings us to the end of today's webinar. Peter, thank you very much. I know it's very early in the USA for you to do this. We really appreciate it and we look forward to our next webinar with our clients. Again, thank you very much for everybody for joining. Thank you, Lloyd. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Okay.